Ah, uh, greetings. My name is your average cup of Joe, and welcome back to FIFA Beast University. Let's get right back into it, shall we? Excuse me, I, I gotta go. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. So, last episode, we got ourselves some more power, as we can see right over, oh, maybe, right over there. We've got ourselves a windmill, and that's providing us plenty of power to keep our machines down there going for a while. We also went ahead and got started with the Batania mod. As you can see, our uh, hydrangeas uh, have despawned. They disappear after three days, so they were here long enough. They made us a little bit of stuff. Uh, not much, as you can see. Uh, we'll be solving that problem today and uh, we got some cool this fabulous mana pool that changes color and we got going on some living rock and living wood so today I've kind of prepared a couple things as you can see here uh, I wanted to get us going on oops didn't grab any seeds I wanted to get us going on this the endo flame it shows here a little setup to automate it but uh, I decided instead that we're gonna do something else that I've set up before it works a little bit differently and I don't want it to just you know pour coal out every time there's not any there uh, and this way it kind of times how long it takes to burn so what we're gonna do we need some seeds we need four and then we need our bucket just to be ready and we'll go ahead and make sure that we'll have an empty hand all right so it takes two brown two red it does not take two red i'm silly uh here we'll just boop. i believe left shift hmm. i know that there's a way to empty it let's read it real quick let's go back mana manipulation no must be basics there it is pedal pop carry uh sneak right clicking with an empty hand will remove there we go so it's just one red and one light gray and there you can see it's ready and we just pop that in we get our endo flame then we refill it and do that another one we'll refill it uh right click another one and refill it oops right click and another one all right, excellent. So we've now got our four endo flames. Uh, let's put them here. We can just put them all right next to each other and let me go get some building blocks. We'll use acacia logs just so that it looks uh, akin to everything else we've got around. All right, so what we'll do is, hmm, I might wanna get rid of this one here. Those leaves should disappear. Oh, they're connected to this one. Of course, we'll go ahead and replant that one. All right. Uh, we can plant this one somewhere else. It's not too big of a deal. We can put it right there. Just got to be careful with... Actually, let's not put it there now that I think about it. Anyway, I'll figure that out later. It's not a big deal. All right. So what we want is a block. How do we want to do this? I'm going to want the dropper thing. Oh, wait. Yeah, we should go build the dropper real quick. And it's also getting dark because, you know, it's dark every three seconds. So to build the little open crate, it's just some living wood planks, which are just made by crafting uh, the living wood. And I'm already hearing monsters, so I'll go sleep and uh, be right back. Okay, so what we'll do is we want the... Oops. We'll want the open crate here. And then we can go make ourselves a drawer for some coal or coal blocks, depending on what we decide. So that should be pretty easy. I've actually already got wood on me, so we can just go. Four, and that's one chest plus six blocks is our drawer. Run back up here. And we'll throw that on top of it. Oh, except for the fact that... Oh, no, no. This is right. Oops. I. By the way, I got this stupid whoopee cushion. So when I 
shifted. Yeah. Uh huh. I killed a mimic after the mimic killed me, as you can see right here. <laughs> also got killed by a zombie. The, the caves in this mod pack are brutal. Um, all right, and then we want a uh, box here, here, and here. And I've got a timer. We're gonna have to build a. Oh, actually, I think. I think if I do it this way, there we go. There we go. Uh, and then we want an invert cell facing the opposite direction. So let's see here. I might need to build a screwdriver, but we'll see if I can't just get it to face the right way. I think actually if I do the same way that I placed, yeah, there we go. All right. And then a repeater. And I have in fact built this too low. So we'll just go up one more, put that down, hop up here, put that down. And then we can just do, we'll go down here and grab some stuff. I've got some more of this red alloy wire, which is, it acts the same as redstone, but uh, instead of, it can go, it can go up things basically. So I can do like this and this, and it connects to that. Or it should anyway. Here, just to make sure we'll do it this way. But yeah, as you can see, it goes on the side of walls. And then we can just do this and this. And. Uh, this needs to be like 30. I don't, it doesn't show me anymore like I have seen in the past. And then, so we want it to burn for. Let's see. I think it so it burns half of the time of the thing and charcoal goes for 80 ticks, which is let's see, so it's 400 seconds. So I think it's like a hundred seconds. Uh, let's just double check off to the side here. Let me pull up some burn times. Maybe. There we go. Uh Minecraft burn times uh coal for eight uh wait no hold on uh eight yeah 80 seconds so we want it to go for 40 seconds is how long we want this i don't know how to get minus there we go uh so we want it for oops 40 seconds and then that should be this must be oh, it's facing the wrong way that's why that's why there we go and that'll basically keep this from constantly dropping stuff so if we come over here and we grab like i don't know 16 pieces of coal that should do a good little bit for a while i'm gonna take this whoopee cushion off it's ridiculous <laughs> all right um and we just chuck that in there. Then after, oh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, because I didn't set the delay. Here, we'll just go down. There we go, and now. No. Let me figure this out and we'll be right back. All right, so I figured it out. This just needed a hopper and uh, yeah. Now it should, I adjusted the timings here, it should drop exactly four pieces of coal, which should get these guys burning. And uh, we'll make sure that they're all connected to our friend here. Yep, 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 and yep, cool. And there it goes, it one. Okay, so it dropped one. <laughs> well, let's adjust the delay a little bit. I think that does less, but yeah, as you can see already, it's, it's produced a lot more just in one little piece of coal. We're getting more frequent uh, mana build up here. And then as soon as that's done, I should actually drop the next one as soon as this one's done burning, if the timings are correct, which I believe they are. It's just the delay that we need to, one, okay, yeah. So the longer delay is this way. 
Now that one's burning, and now this one's stopped, so actually we'll just adjust this out like two or three. Let's just do 45 seconds. That way we for sure have used up all the burn on this, and then they're ready for more. But already, as you can see, we're getting the mana thrown into here much more frequently. I gotta eat. I've got some cooked aubergines today to eat. Okay, so once we make sure that this is working, then the next step that I wanted to get going on, oh, we've got this, we can claim the coal ore from it. Great. Uh, I wanted to make this runic altar. Just one second, so let me make sure it works here. Oh, one, two, three, four, exactly, perfect. And now all four of them are going, and now we're really gonna start getting some. As you can see, I don't even have my wand out, and it's just a constant flow of mana. So, that's great. And yeah, we're building up mana here. All right, so what I wanna get started on now is this runic altar. So for that, we need five living rock and either a mana diamond or a mana pearl. And those are made just by dropping a diamond or an ender pearl into the mana pool, and it converts them into a mana diamond or mana pearl. So earlier, when I was out, I believe, oh, did I lose it? Well, that's unfortunate, oh, nope, there it is. I got an ender pearl. Uh, we'll just go ahead and throw this in the ore chest for now. Get this out of the way. So, if you, oh, and we'll grab our living rock real quick. We needed five. And we'll make ourselves a little crafting table up there. Just to help us not have to come down so frequently. Uh, one of these. Boom. Boom. We got our crafting station. And we can just put it up by this tree, we'll say. Okay. So we can throw our, you can see here that that mana pearl, oops, yeah, we'll or the sender pearl turns into a mana pearl and it has enough mana to do that. And just like that, we've got our mana pearl and we can do this and this, and this is our runic altar. So this we'll put here. And as you can see, it's got these fancy little blocks that float above it. So let's read about the runic altar. The runic altar uses mana and items to craft runes, which are used in some crafting recipes. Throw the ingredients on, feed it mana via a mana spreader, and let it craft. When it's done absorbing mana, throw some living rock on and click with it and click it with a wand of the forest. So I think what we'll do is we'll make a secondary mana spreader specifically to go from here to here. Uh, we'll put it like in between these two, that way it can feed from either of them. All right, so we're back. I just went ahead, slept through the night, and went ahead and made our other mana spreader, so we can just plonk that down and make sure that it is definitely targeting that. Uh, and this won't spare to it until I tell this to uh, do that, and then it'll start sending. But we don't need it to, because we're not doing anything quite yet. But we might change that right now. All right, so we've made our runic altar. The next step is supposedly the terrasteel agglomeration plate. Uh, and it will use half a mana pool's worth of mana to convert a mana pearl, a mana steel ingot, and a mana diamond into a terra steel ingot. Supply mana using sparks. Some blocks can use sparks to request mana from nearby pools that also have sparks. The more pools with sparks, the faster it works. So this is a little bit away. Uh, we're going to need a block of mana steel, so that's nine iron, lapis lazuli blocks, and then all of these runes. So we're going to we're going to be away from a while away from that. In the meantime, we can look at Alter Automation School. Uh, visit the Alter Automation School. This school shows you how to fully automate the runic altar using only Batania and Vanilla Redstone. Go there using that command, or I can just click on this. So we will do that. And just like that, it teleports us. I apologize for my dog. Uh, you can fully automate the runic altar using any Batania and Vanilla Redstone. All right, so ingredients for Rune of Fire. Okay, so we can see they've got some mana powder, which is just redstone or glowstone or any dust thrown into a mana pool. It includes gunpowder. Uh, mana steel is just, just iron thrown into a mana pool. Nether brick, gunpowder, and nether wart. Okay, and that goes... I'm not sure. Let's see, let's read. Dispensers can use a wand of the forest when powered. This one activates when the altar is full of mana detected below. Try crafting a rune of fire. Okay. Oh, there's more stuff down here, I see. Okay, the comparator powers the dropper, which inserts living rock into the red string container. 
which is connected to a hopper above. From there, it drops onto the runic altar. Runic altars give two comparators, give a comparator signal of two when they are done accepting mana. This red string comparator creates this signal. So that's what this is. I'm assuming it, I'm not exactly sure how that works, but I believe it. Uh, waiting until after the living rock, rock is dropped, the signal powers the dispenser above. Okay. Cool. Um, so, I believe I just need one of each of these things. I'm not actually sure what I need. It didn't tell me. So let's go ahead and uh, rune of fire. So it needs, yep, just one of each. So to do that, you just throw each of these things on there and it's ready. And just like that, we have our runes of fire. Interesting. All right. So all that takes is some detection and stuff like that. Um, I'm not really sure that that's necessary, but it's definitely cool. So we can go ahead and head back. I was going to say, I'm sure that'll clear that from my inventory. All right. So we've learned that. Uh, let's... We have a lot to get into here. Let's go ahead and make an alchemy catalyst. That's pretty simple, except for the fact that we can't. So, um, let's see here. What can we do next? There's all of these producing flowers, which I'm not really ready for yet. Uh, an Agricarnation carnation wouldn't be terrible, but I'm sure it needs a uh, rune of spring, okay? Which needs runes of water and fire. And we've already seen that we can't make the rune of fire because we don't have nether wart or nether brick. Uh, the rune of water we could make, but uh, there's not much point into it right now as we don't really have, that's just any sapling, okay. Um. Hmm, let's see here. Let me figure out what to do next and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. I've decided what we're going to do is get into tinkers. So the first task is make materials in you, which is just a book and a pattern. So we'll go down here and grab a pattern. I've already made a book. Uh, oops, I'm all over the place, this one. So we just craft these together. And bam, materials new. And while we're at it, um, I would like to make the Akashic Tome because we've got all these books now. And uh, oh, I need one more book, and I don't think I have enough leather for that. Uh, is there a? Oh, interesting. Is there a recipe for turning? No, that makes tallow. Can you make uh, candles out of that? That's not what I want. Um, I'm just curious if there's any, ooh, weird, rotten flesh repair kits. No, it doesn't look like there's any crafting recipe to make leather out of. Oh, wait, vial of tannin, which is a gall apple. Yeah, I don't have any of those. Um, yeah, dang. Doesn't look like it. Let's go back. Uh, is there, oh, you can do it with string. Okay, I have some string. Perfect, let's make another book. Interesting, interesting. Uh, we just put our string here and another book. All right, so we just combine the bookshelf and that and we get our Akashic Tome. And then what we can do with this is open it up. Oh wait, I think actually what we do is we craft them. So we can put those together. And we can put, I don't think we can put the questing one in there, but we can put our Luxica Batania in there. I don't think that there's any other books that I've got, but it wouldn't hurt to look. Um, no. And also while I was out harvesting my sugar cane, which I will now put away, I ran into an Enderman and he gave me this Enderman statue. Uh, we'll put this upstairs. Perhaps in our library. I like that. And we'll put him right here. We've got an Enderman statue. Don't know what he does. If anything. He just looks cool. 
And we also got this skill book from the Epic Fight mod, and I believe the consecutive blocking penalty will be removed when you guard according to the enemy's attack timing. Players will be able to block range attacks, available weapon types, katana, longsword, sword, and tachi. You must learn guard skill first, which I haven't done. So for now, we'll store this away. But uh, yeah, that was kind of interesting that I got that. I'm fighting a little Enderman. We'll run on down here and throw this just in the misc chest for now. All right, so let's see here. Uh, grab, I was making some charcoal for our little endo flames here, so we'll go ahead and throw that in real quick. All right, so our next step is to make a part builder. And to make a part builder, we need uh, I'm assuming, yeah, any planks and two patterns. So we'll go ahead and head down and start making that stuff. Let's see, our patterns are in here. We're gonna need some more, which is fine. We got plenty of wood. Or not. <laughs> That's fine. So there's some more patterns. And we have two planks and two patterns. Makes a part builder. Okay. So we can claim a ton of patterns now. That's great. So the part builder is where you make lower tier tool parts, basically anything that isn't metal. Uh, and they've changed it recently. It used to be you needed the actual stencil, but now it's just in the same block. Uh, so only tier one materials can be used in the part builder. Check materials and you for a list. On the right, you can see the material stats. You can hover over lines to see more information on them. Uh, take the part out of the right slot to craft it using up the materials and pattern. So, next thing we can make is our Tinker Station. Uh, and that's how we build Tier 1 tour tools. And to make that, we need four planks and three patterns. Uh, so we'll go ahead and grab a couple wood here, make some more planks. Plank, plank, patterns. And there we have our Tinker Station. So I think... Hmm... I know that that's an outside wall, that's an outside wall. This should be a safe wall. So what we'll go ahead and do is break ourselves a little opening here. So we'll light it up in here. And we'll place down our part builder and then our tinker station and we get a crafting station from that not that we needed more but we'll take it uh, and then we'll store some of this stuff away for a minute uh, everything goes in different places excellent uh, we can go ahead and put away these things. Okay, great. So now uh, we need, we're not gonna make, we need a part chest. So that's just a chest, some sticks and planks and a pattern. I put everything away too early. Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, okay. All right, we'll make our little chest. And then we'll put our plank there, and these there, and our pattern there. And there's our part chest. The other chest is a tinker's chest. The tinker's chest can, can have 64 slots, but only holds 16 items per slot maximum. They can be dyed, keep their contents unbroken, and can access and be accessed from other adjacent tinker's tables. So for that, we need a trapped chest. I'm assuming any chest, yeah, any wooden chest, actually. Uh, four lapis, a plank, and a pattern. We can do that. One, two, three, four. And we'll need a couple there. Make another chest. Four lapis, a plank, and a pattern. And there's our tinker's chest. We'll throw this at the end. Uh, not sure exactly what that holds. I'm sure it can hold like parts and stuff like that, but so does this, so who knows. Uh, so, let's look here. No rewards for that, that's fine. 
make the Encyclopedia of Tinkering. That takes all of the... We've got Puny Smelting, uh, which is Grout, Mighty Smelting, which you pour Seared Stone over a book. Interesting, okay. And Fantastic Foundry, which takes Nether Grout, which we can't get yet. So we'll hold off on that. Um, in the meantime, let's see here. Modifier types. Learn about the types of modifiers. Come in five types. You have upgrades, which give some kind of boost, like speed, damage, etc. These take up upgrade slots. Defense modifiers are only used for armor and boost its protection in certain situations. Slotless modifiers don't take up any slots. Uh, these tend to be weaker, like making your tool glow, or passive, like giving you more upgrade slots. Um, abilities give more unique, well, Abilities. <laughs> These are things like fortune, silk touch, auto smelting. Okay, great. They take up ability slots, which are harder to come by. And traits are inherent into a part's material. Stone parts always give stone bound. Flint always gives jagged, etc. Sometimes materials may have lower stats, but a better trait as a trade off. Okay. So we've learned about modifier types. I think it's time to get into a smeltery. So we only have access to the very basic melter at the beginning, it looks like. Uh, it's a multi-block that allows you to melt metals into fluids, place a seared heater, provide it with solid fuel, then place the seared melter on top. Uh, it can smelt up to three items at a time and can hold nine ingots worth of molten metal. Additionally, melting ores will produce an additional one third of an ingot. Oh, interesting. So it's no longer doubling. Okay. Uh, so to make a seared heater, it's eight seared brick, which is just grout which is still the same crafting, okay. Um, and then a seared melter takes a seared fuel gauge, which is glass and seared brick, okay. I will go gather the materials for some grout and we will be right back. All right, so we got all of our gravel and clay here. It should be more than enough. That's one, two stacks of grout, four, and six stacks should be plenty for all of our needs forever. So we'll go ahead and pull that out and chuck one stack in there. We'll go ahead and put this osmium away right there. Had to make a new Paxel. My other one broke and I know we're getting ready for tools, but we're not yet there yet. So I had to do what I had to do. All right, we will come back as soon as this is ready. All right, it's finished. So grab this and it was, I believe that, that's our seared heater and one, two, three, four plus, oh, we don't quite have enough glass. Let's see if we've got a spare sand laying around somewhere. Should have one somewhere, I thought. Oh, you know what? Oh, was that it? Nope, those are bone. I think it's over here. Yeah. Throw that in. And there's that. All right, there's our seared fuel gauge. And then that's just surrounded by those. And we have our seared melter. All right, go ahead and plop this down right. We'll throw it here for now. And just like that, this is our first tinker stuff. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and give that like button a nice warm hug. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to read it. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.